I guess my major concern uh, is that we're six days into the investigation. We haven't seen Brittany or had any contact with her in the last six, six days. Six days and no sign of 12-year-old Brittany Smith. Cops believe she's being held against her will by her mother's former boyfriend, Jeff Easley. Brittany's mom found dead in her house. Where is Brittany? Gail, Tennessee, your question or thought, man. Gail. Yes. Yes, um, Gail. Question or thought, man. Hi. <laughs> hi. Well, I just had a comment. Um, you know, we're looking at these pictures of them in Walmart, and it doesn't look like she's trying to get away from him. And I think you said on her MySpace or her Facebook, she changed her last name to his, and she also changed her age. Who's to say she's not in on this with him and going along with it and helping with everything that he's done? That's the question. Did Brittany go willingly with the suspect? But here's what cops had to say about that, and it's a very important legal point. Listen to this. We've heard a lot of rumors about uh, uh, a relationship between uh, Mr. Easley and Brittany. And I'd like to say this morning, that what, what we're dealing with is a 12-year-old girl. And she can't make decisions. Uh, uh, she can't make legal decisions. Consent is irrelevant if she wanted to go with him or not go with him. Now, here's my big issue tonight. Were red flags ignored? The Roanoke Times says Brittany told a friend that she was scared of this boyfriend and that she was worried he would take her and hurt her mom. And the neighbor said that this guy acted creepy around the 12-year-old. One neighbor saw Easley and Brittany together and said, this guy gives me the creeps. The way he touches her, the way he looks at her, made me very uneasy. Michelle Golland. Um, Absolutely. I, I don't think, A, that it matters whether she, a 12-year-old, consented, as the cops say, but I have a feeling she didn't. I think she's terrified. Well, the, the officer is exactly right, Jane. This does, it does not matter whether she went willingly or not. She cannot legally consent to this. And in my estimation, this, this could be a young girl who is frightened, obviously, for her own life. Her mother has now been killed. We have no idea how under duress she is. I mean, we just got done in, in looking at the Elizabeth Smart case and all that she went through. To me, it's no different what could be happening to this young girl. Uh, she could be seriously under duress and, and in a great amount of fear. Now, listen to this. Last Thursday, the day before Brittany and Jeff were seen on the Walmart surveillance video, uh, the day before this mom was last seen, uh, Brittany's mom, Tina Smith, made this very ominous entry on her Facebook page, quote, if I should die before I wake, God bless my friends, may I be remembered for my good heart and hopeless romantic ways. Now, Mark Iglar, some say that sounds suicidal. To me, it sounds like a woman who's scared that she might not wake up. Yeah, that's how I took it. But what I found most fascinating in this case is when law enforcement was asked whether he easily was potentially responsible for her death, their exact quote, Jane, was, authorities have no information to indicate that, but the investigation is ongoing. That was kind of shocking to me. We have no information to indicate that. Now, either they really don't, which is shocking, or they're trying to suggest to him, hey, it's okay, we're not necessarily pinning this murder on you, so come on in, bring the 12-year-old yeah. in. And I gotta say this, Mike Brooks, the scariest piece of information that I read about today was that this guy dropped out of high school in 96 because he was accused of assault with a deadly weapon on a government official and a friend, somebody who says they were a friend, uh, called us and said this guy's got a very violent temper. Yeah, that's that's not that's not good. But uh, but I do agree with Mark. It could be a ploy by law enforcement. Oh, and we also God. heard uh, the, the, during the spoke with the uh, with the chief that says, "Hey, look, you know, just let her come home so she can help to plan her mother's funeral and attend her funeral." And one other big piece of information I thought was good: identifying marks on this guy, Jane. They said that he has a red star tattoo and a tribal tattoo. Uh, on, on his on his arms apparently so that's another identifying mark that if someone sees anyone matching the description because he could have shaved off the goatee he could have he could have uh, changed his hair color these are identifying marks that he cannot change Jane yeah and a uh, cops as you mentioned have this message for Jeff Easley let Brittany attend her mom's funeral and the suspect's own mother has begged Easley to let this girl go listen to what she had to say 
from what I know about you and Brittany. I wondered if you were hungry or if y'all were cold. You know, you can call me and I just want you to come home and I want you to be safe. And I know you're taking care of Brittany. If you would just take her somewhere and drop her off, call 911 or give me a call, come to the house, do whatever you need to do. We'll help you work this out. I love you. Amanda Cotis Bodie, your reporter the Roanoke Times. You know the area well. If they were to go camping, where would they go? Uh, it's hard to say. There's so many places around here. We've got the Jefferson National Forest. There's just a lot of mountains, a lot of land out there they could be in. As you mentioned, it's very cold. It's possible they've traveled out of state. He's got ties to uh, Alabama, North Carolina, apparently Florida. So they've got a lot of area to search. Wow. Uh, here's what I'm wondering about Mike Brooks. Cops say, okay, he bought camping equipment. In other words, in that basket that they're pushing right there, there's that blue pup tent, Gatorade, and water. But they're also saying in the same breath that they believe somebody is hiding them and that somebody is basically protecting them and maybe even giving them food. So why would they need camping equipment if they could stay at somebody's house? Well, they said that if they, if he, they believe that he is still in that region, if he is still in that area, he could be receiving help. But in the interim, while he's traveling, traveling north, south, east, or west, that could be an interim place to stay in that shelter of that uh, particular blue tent that they were talking about. Yeah, and you mentioned the tattoo we have. There's the blue tent that they right. bought. So if, if you're in the Virginia area and there's the tattoos, look at those tattoos. There's the tent. If you see, if you see a man and a young girl in a tent and the guy has these tattoos, don't approach them. Call authorities. Now, I, Michelle Golland, you know, uh, yes. I don't know what you can read into tattoos. I mean, so many, millions of people have tattoos, and some of them are very beautiful and striking, and I, I love them. But is there mm -hmm. any psychological analysis you could apply to those tattoos? We'll put it up one more time. You know, that's so hard to, to say, Jane, uh, in looking at it. Um, one of the things I would want to mention that I think is so important is that, to me, what I'm seeing in this gentleman is that he is someone who would be grooming someone like this young girl to come away with him. That he may have sought out on the internet a family, a divorced woman that had a 12-year-old or had a young girl uh, in, in, her, in, in the family. And I think it's very important to uh, think about that and to think about who it is that we let in, into our lives. Yeah, and especially he met her on the internet. And again, millions of people meet their loves on the internet. I'm not knocking internet dating, but um, perhaps yeah. he was asking her, do you have any children? Oh, show me a picture Absolutely. of your child. Right. And yeah, that's how it happens. Right. And we've got to be alert Absolutely. because you never know when you're inviting the enemy into your home and then sleeping with the enemy. Is Jane, it part another, or violence? Absolutely. Go ahead, Mark. An another point is that anyone out there who knows this information, now it's all out there, and anyone who assists in any way becomes a principal to the crime of kidnapping and God knows what else, even if they play a minor role in this. So, you know, better turn them over to law enforcement. Or drop a dot, you know, go go to a pay phone and call, call, call 911. Uh, Mary, California, your question, your thought, ma'am. Well, my question is, and my thought, would be that he pre-planned all of this out, which means that he could have dug a hole and kept her in the hole, and she might not even know that her mother is dead. And he could have used the camping uh, to equipment to shield his car. Uh, well, it's a small tent. It's a pup tent for two. But uh, you're right. I mean, in the sense that we saw it with the Elizabeth Smart case, as somebody mentioned here, where there was already a campsite set up where he goes and abducts mm -hmm. Elizabeth Smart and takes her up the mountain to a campsite. And uh, I just pray and hope that this child is okay. And if for some reason you're sitting in somebody's house and watching Jeff easily, let her go. Just let her go and keep moving. Thank you so much. Fantastic panel. Our I hope that law enforcement doesn't cut off that credit card that they have because, as we all know, that's a good form of uh, tracking their whereabouts. And also, they need food to survive, regardless of 
what occurred. They still have to, this child has to eat and stay warm. Um, about internet dating and bringing someone into your life. I mean, everybody's got to be cautious, but at the rate of all the children that are missing and slowly are being found dead, they're being found, they are missing and dead because of the hands of their natural parents. Um, at least one of them, in some cases, both parents, but in, in, in most cases, it's one biological parent that kills their child. So to say you got to be careful who you sleep with, you also have to be careful who you marry. If, you know, people change in life. People are crazy. And um, as we know with the father with the three children, Mr. Skelton and his three, and his three children that are missing, and Dee Blaze, who killed his two babies. Um, that's a biological parent. And with uh, this uh, Easley guy hitting a government official, and it seems that this might have been back in his high school days, and he probably hit a cop. Uh, right thing to do? No. Teenage thing to do? Yeah, they do it. You know, they think that they know it all. Let's hope that this child is found. And I really, you know, with the statement about finding the mother deceased, I mean, I sure as heck hope she didn't uh, commit suicide. It, it just doesn't seem that she would have, but, or did they, or was she given medication, overdosed on medication that she was given? I'm so tired of this. So sad.